Let's look at the MechBoard 64, a drop-in replacement mechanical keyboard for the Commodore 64. Ever since I discovered the MechBoard 64, I wanted one. Here was a way for me to finally complete a Commodore 64 from all new parts. Unless you manage to bag some keycaps from a crowdfunded campaign or have an old set lying around and access to a 3D printer to print some adapters, then you'll need to use regular Cherry MX compatible keycaps like I ended up doing. You'll also need one of these faceplates, which I'll look at later. The designer of the MechBoard did some testing with various switches and found the yellow ones to feel most like typing on an original Commodore 64 keyboard. As I mentioned, if using original keycaps, you'll need to print these adapters. Two keys use stabilizers and they are the return key and the spacebar. Since the Commodore spacebar is so long, you'll most likely need to make your own. The designer gives some useful tips about wire diameter being 1mm and any greater than this can damage the tool. The shift lock can be handled in two ways, the first being that a latching switch is used as in the original Commodore 64 and the second is a regular momentary switch is used to drive the input of some circuitry that then provides a latched output. This latched output is then toggled each time the shift lock key is pressed and user feedback as to the state is given by an LED under the keycap. You can purchase the PCB from PCBWay.com who are the sponsors of this video. Simply head on over to PCBWay's shared project area and search for MechBoard64. Then add to the cart and select the colour of the PCB which best suits your project. Scrolling down a little, you'll find the bill of materials required excluding the faceplate and switches. With the exception of the header pins, these are all surface mount components. PCBWay are super reliable and can manufacture your PCB designs to a range of specifications from 1 to 60 layers and in a range of colours. CNC, sheet metal work and injection moulding are just some of the additional services that PCBWay offer. And of course, don't forget to check out their community shared projects area for great projects uploaded by people like you and me. PCB prototype the easy way with PCBWay Com. The boards arrived and were fantastic as to be expected. Next, I needed to source a faceplate. A quick Google search turned up plenty on eBay but these were in the US and with the size of them the shipping was quite a lot. I then toyed with the idea of 3D printing one and headed over to thingiverse.com to see if someone had already drawn one up. Fantastic, several variations existed. This one is printed in pieces and then assembled into a single faceplate. And unless you have a printer with an extremely large bed, then this will be the way to go. Just before I started to print, I did one more eBay search and found a seller in the UK selling the metal faceplates. So I ordered one there and then and I'm so glad that I did as several days later the seller had completely sold out. Next to source was the switches. I decided to go with Gatron switches as they are considerably less than Cherry MX switches. Whichever make you decide to go for, keep in mind the footprint. The PCB will only take this type of footprint, a central support and then these two electrical connection legs. By contrast, the Gatron Milky Yellow Pro switch has a slightly different footprint, which you can see here has an additional two plastic supports and this won't fit the PCB design. Since my aim was to build a new keyboard without using original keycaps, and I had missed out on the crowdfunding campaign back in 2019, I could think of two possibilities for the new keycaps, either 3D print some or purchase some custom printed keycaps as I did in my ZX81 video series. I decided to go down the latter route so I drew up this in Adobe Illustrator. The final step to do before using this file to order some keycaps was to convert everything in the image to be vector based. That means that the text is no longer text, instead each character is converted to an image and that image is vector based so therefore it can be scaled without any loss of image quality. To do this simply select everything and then from the menu select object and then expand. Leave everything default and click OK. Now save as and give it a file name containing the word expanded like I've previously done here. This way you won't accidentally upload the wrong version of your design to be printed. 
WASD keyboards have templates that you can download in both Inkscape and Adobe format, and this is the one that I downloaded. Ordering the keycaps is fairly straightforward. I just selected the colors I wanted for each key. So for alphanumeric keys, I selected beige, and I went for gray for the modifier keys, and then uploaded my template. While I waited for the keycaps to arrive, I set about soldering the surface mount components into place. The components are pretty large as far as surface mount components go, so even if you've never soldered SMD components before, so long as you're fairly competent with the soldering iron, you should find it fairly easy to do. I used some flux when soldering the ICs in place as it helps the solder to flow a little more easily. Then a quick visual inspection to ensure that all the SMD joints looked good. Then I soldered the pins in place. In theory, you only require one of the 90 degree headers. Which one you solder depends on the motherboard you have. I soldered both headers in place as I may want to use this keyboard with a different motherboard in the future. Next, the switches were inserted into the faceplate. Then I gently offered the PCB up to the switches and checked that all pins were aligned before applying any pressure. It's super important to check this before pushing the board in place or you could end up with bent legs on the switches and them not being inserted into the PCB. Next, I fed the PCB a whole bunch of solder. and then I gave it a good clean. Then I tested several LEDs to see which one looked the brightest since it would be hidden under the shift lock key and I'd want to be able to easily see it once the keycap was in place. I then soldered the LED into place. The keyboard was then ready to receive its keycaps. I truly love how they turned out. The print is super clear and easy to read.
The stabilizer still haven't arrived in the post yet. So I just added the return key without the stabilizer and to be fair, it didn't feel too bad without the stabilizer. Although for an everyday keyboard, you'd definitely want the stabilizer in place. The control restore and shift keys proved to be problematic since I had neglected to take into consideration that the key in the template I'd chosen attaches to the switch stem at the keycap center and the positioning of the key next to its neighbor meant that the keycap wouldn't fit. The spacebar would also be a problem since standard spacebar lengths are a lot shorter than those used by the Commodore 64. Possible solutions could be to locate a new 9U spacebar or 3D print one. I found some Commodore 64 keycaps on thingiverse.com and I made an initial test print, but I had issues with the support print being extremely difficult to extract. So at some point in the future, I'm going to give printing these keys another go. I recommend sourcing a ribbon cable with a single solid connector. The only cable I had to hand was one with individual connectors which proved quite awkward to connect. I had the same issue with the function keycaps as I did with the shift keycaps. This meant that my function key keycaps were too far over to the right for the case to fit back together again. As a temporary workaround, I swapped out the keycaps for some 1U keycaps. Until I source a suitable spacebar, I attached this keycap so that I could at least test the keyboard. So although a little unconventional looking, okay, not so little, but more quite unconventional looking, my MechBoard 64 keyboard is now working. The shift lock functionality works tremendously well, giving clear user feedback as to its state. As to the gaps that surround some of the keys, I'm still undecided which route to take. I could 3D print some fillers or larger keycaps, or of course I could try and source some new keycaps. So in conclusion, if I was to rebuild this, things that I would probably do a little bit different next time are research into the different types of keycaps to see if there's anything more suitable, or possibly redesign the board slightly by ever so slightly nudging over some of those switches, although that does seem a little bit extreme. Now, I'd be very interested to hear from anybody who's built one of these MechBoard 64. Did you use the original Commodore 64 keycaps or did you use some from the crowdfunded campaign or did you use some regular Cherry MX compatible keycaps like I did? Please drop your comments down below. Thanks for joining me on my learning journey. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe so that you don't miss my next video. Click here to see my ZX81 video series and click here for a video that YouTube thinks you will enjoy the most. Until next time, take care.